just found something I wrote in 1984 in high school on the question when it was wrote. When was the last time you seen computer paper like this? But the name of my story was Animals Have Rights Too. For most of us relieving ourselves of hunger pains, it's as simple as taking a trip down to the local McDonald's or Burger King. This sounds harmless enough, right? We satisfied our urge to eat. We didn't hurt anyone in the process, or so we thought. Even though buying a hamburger or chicken sandwich seems relatively harmless, what about the animals that must endure torture and die a senseless death just to fulfill your wishes for a piece of meat? Although animals are part of the food chain, that does not give humans the right to exploit them and treat them as a product, not as a form of life which they are. For example, even if you do not agree that killing animals for their flesh is unethical, then think about it in an environmentalist point of view. Did you know that one slaughterhouse uses the same amount of water in one day that 25,000 people would use? Also, 75% of our topsoil in the United States has been destroyed by animals that are to be used as meat consumption. Even if none of this interests you yet, how about your own life? It is a fact that meat eater is 13 times more prone to a heart attack than a non-meat eater is. And even if your doctor tells you your cholesterol level is normal or fine, you still has a 50% more chance of dying of a heart attack than a non-meat eater. Remember, contrary to the myths, the healthiest people in the world are vegetarians. Morally speaking, putting animal flesh in your body is condoning the many millions of deaths each year that are unnecessary. To eat one egg, a chicken must spend 22 hours of its life in a cage the size of a folded newspaper. The same chicken also has no beak because the top of it was seared off with a red-hot iron at birth. But no matter how bad the sound, this chicken is lucky because she was chosen to live. You see, male chickens are thrown into plastic bags when they are born and thrown away like yesterday's garbage. Chickens are not the only ones who suffer unspeakably. When born, male pigs are castrated without any anesthesia and they are thrown into concrete pens and where they will have no freedom of movement will never know what a pleasant, mo pleasant moment in life is. For that, basty, for that tasty veal cutlet you indulge in, a calf was separated from its mother at birth and put into a small, dark, and damp room where it will never breathe fresh air or see the sun. The same calf will be fed only milk for the duration of its life, which will be approximately six months. At the end of six months, this calf's head will be stuck through a hole in the wall with its feet clamped to the ground while it bleeds to death from a slit made by the blade of a knife so that the meat is tastier and kosher. So before you eat something, I hope that you keep in mind that the flesh which you are eating was a creature that was capable of feeling emotions such as joy, sadness, and love. These creatures gave birth to offspring which they never had the chance to care for, and they lived a life that included nothing but pain, torture, and fear. If consuming the flesh of a living creature does not phase you, then how about the leather jacket you're wearing or those leather shoes and belt you're wearing? Also, ladies, what about that fur coat you're wearing when you go out to dinner and impress your friends? If you reason... If your reasoning is that animals are raised for food, what is your excuse to what you are wearing? Did you know that 60 minks are murdered for that mink coat you are wearing? Or that 10 to 20 foxes or raccoons are necessarily killed for that fox or raccoon coat you are wearing? If the number of animals senselessly murdered for your warmth does not phase you, then how about the method by which these animals are killed? In producing a fur coat or leather jacket, the animal is skinned alive with a pocket knife by the hand of a fellow human being. The animal is left to die an extremely painful death without its skin. The reason the animals are skinned alive like this is that the fur to hide of the animal is supposed to be softer and more pliable removed from the animal while it is living.
There is absolutely no reason these millions of deaths each year because there are many of man-made materials such as vinyl, dacron, rayon, nylon, and polyester which will serve just as well in keeping you warm during the winter. If you do not like the idea of wearing these synthetic materials, then how about wearing wool or cotton clothes? Even though I do not condone this because these animals are raised for nothing more than their hair and fur, at least by wearing wool and cotton, an animal does not need to die an excruciatingly painful death. As far as your belts and shoes are concerned, there's no reason an animal must be murdered when there are so many of these products on the market which are made up of canvas and synthetic materials. Also, you should keep in mind that clothes made up of synthetic materials are a lot cheaper. So why put an animal through a lot of needless torture and pain? And while doing this, save some of your hard-earned money. If wearing the skin of a once living and caring animal does not bother you, then maybe the fact that 486,000 animals are murdered every day in animal test laboratories in the United States alone. To better understand this number, it can be said that the present population in the United States would be wiped out in a little more than one and a half years if this number was to represent people. Many of these animals die in excruciating pain because they are burned, poisoned, forced to entail toxic fumes, surgically mutilated, deprived, battered, irradiated, blinded, held in restraining devices for a month, and otherwise used. These animals are recycled through many series of experiments before death finally releases them from the torture. Most of these animals are not given any type of painkillers or anesthesia. Furthermore, these animal tests are crude, outdated, and reliable, and unreliable. Four billion tax dollars are spent annually on animal testing, and products tested to be safe on animals have caused birth defects, illness, and instances of death to human beings. At the present time, millions of dollars are spent annually on duplicate and often cruel experiments using animal models of drug abuse. Millions of animals, from snails to primates and even elephants, have been used to perform research and addiction research of little more to show than many corpses of dead animals. Since 1948, NIDAS, which is National Institute of Drug Abuse, Addiction Research Center has forced millions of dogs with severed spines to be addicted on morphine and vitamins PCP and barbiturates just to find the withdrawal reactions of the drugs, which consisted of fever, seizures, delirium, and even death. At the John Hopkins Medical School of Medicine in 1981, Three quarters of a million dollars are spent to show a heroin addicted baboons are forced to choose between food and heroin will alternate their choices to get both. In 1983, the Amphetamine Research Center spent over half a million dollars to show how other animals were addicted on amphetamines. In 1980, the University of South Carolina spent $387,000 on giving cats LSD, and the only result from this experiment is the observations that the cats are constantly pouncing on non-existent objects and constantly scratching themselves for no reason. There are absolutely no legitimate reasons for the pain inflicted upon these animals. If anyone wants to study the effects of drug addiction, all they have to do is study a group of addicts in any one of the many ghettos in the United States. It is thought that scientists are using animals to find cures for cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and other life-threatening illnesses. That's what they want you to believe. But the truth is that millions of dogs, cats, monkeys, rabbits, rats, horses, reptiles, and dolphins are scalded, baked alive, crushed, suffocated, poisoned, irradiated, shocked, and blasted by explosive. It is claimed that all this is done in the name of scientific research, but in truth having nothing at all to do with human health and well-being. Even more sadly, these cruel experiments are repeatedly performed with no results giving better health to human beings. 
For example, tests on animals such as burning have been performed 650 times. Also, tests for ionizing radiation have been performed on animals Oh, the camera turned off. <laughs> Even more sadly, these cruel experiments are repeatedly performed, no results giving better health to human beings. For example, tests on animals such as burning have been performed 650 times. Also, tests for ionizing radiation have been performed on animals 975 times, while the amount of tests for radiation cancer have been performed 38,000 times. As if this is not enough, these numbers of tests were performed in a one-year period, wasting billions of tax dollars, which did not result in one cure for cancer, heart disease, or any other life-threatening disease. Animals in a test laboratory at Hazelton Laboratories Toxicology and Poisoning Laboratory in Maryland, USA, identify many small animals by cutting off their toes. This procedure is explained by an ex-Hazelton lab technician as being performed with a pair of unsterile metal snips without any form of anesthesia. According to this technician, the room where the identifying process takes place looks like there had been a bloodbath. The animals looked terrified in their cages and had no kind of padding to comfort their feet from the wire mesh cages that entrapped and entombed them. In SEMA laboratories, thousands of chimpanzees are neighbor able to once in their life stretch out an arm, let alone two arms, because of the small wire mesh cages they are kept in. Being animals that use their long, strong arms in their natural habitat to climb from tree to tree, they cannot de be deprived of stretching their limbs, which is normal postural adjustment of chimpanzees. To make matters worse, these chimpanzees are confined from other chimps for their entire lives, which results in madness and misery for many of these highly intelligent social primates. Companies such as L'Oreal, Gillette, Wilkinson Sword Razor, and Mary Kay Cosmetics, just to name a few blah just to name a few, blind, poison, and kill millions of animals every year in their test laboratory. These companies perform tests such as cutting out the eyelids from a rabbit and pouring corrosive or acidic chemicals into the eyes of the animals to see the results. The result is that the animal is painfully blinded and will possibly die from shock. Moreover, Moreover, these are the only results that are derived from this experiment. The bottom line to animal research for cures for heart disease, cancer, and other serious diseases is that it is a waste of $4 billion tax dollars every year in the United States alone. Also to this present date, no cure for any type of illness or disease has ever been found by performing animal research. The main reason that no cure for any diseases or illnesses has been found from animal research is due to the physical and biological differences between human beings and other animals. It is factual that animals respond differently to drugs and chemicals than human beings do. But the only thing that humans and animals have in common is that they are capable of feeling pain and expressing their emotions. So why put animals through this unnecessary and needless torture? In conclusion, many people think that caring for an animal is done by petting a dog or stroking a cat. This is not caring for an animal, but is only done for human satisfaction for many people. Just keep in mind that the next time you go to McDonald's to eat, wear a leather or fur coat, or buy a product that is manufactured from a company that is torturing animals for research, you are condoning the millions of animal deaths in the United States every year. Remember, animals are not ours to eat, wear, or experiment on. And animals have rights too. And actually I wrote this. Richard Jacobs, English 120. I wrote this in June 4th, 1990, using all research throughout the 1980s. Peace out, people.